Welcome back to the Dr. Michael Show. What a great show we got for you today. Today we're going to explore the impact your emotions, traumas, and belief systems have on your health. I'll also show you a couple of techniques that you can use in the comfort of your own home. These are tools that can help you whenever you're going through emotional difficult times, but they can also be used for things like food cravings, shifting your belief about yourself and others, and also physical complaints such as pain, insomnia, asthma, allergies, hormonal and chemical imbalance, and, and much more. What scientists are finding out more and more is that there's a direct connection between the mind and the body. You can't affect the one without impacting the other. This means that your emotions, unresolved traumas, and the resulting beliefs about yourself can be the cause of something that seems very physical, like arthritis, back pain, multiple sclerosis, or even cancer. Growing up in Sweden, there was a great stigma about going to a counselor or doing any type of psychotherapy. If people around you found out that you were going to a counselor, they immediately thought that you were just one step away actually from being committed to a mental hospital. They were so emotionally suppressed and afraid of their own emotions that anyone who went through any type of psychotherapy became a threat to them. Then, as a contrast, when I had my practice in Santa Monica, California, I had a lot of high-profile patients, both in the entertainment and the business world. So to them, it was widely recognized that if you wanted to operate on a higher level, it was important to resolve the emotional baggage that interfered with your ability to obtain peak performance as a professional, but also as a person. We all want to journey through life and experience joy, excitement, happiness, love, peace, and so forth. Life experiences and belief patterns that we may have inherited from our parents sometimes teaches us to hold on to emotions such as resentment, guilt, shame, anger, abandonment, and fear as a survival mechanism. Yes, these emotions helped us to survive what we went through at the time, but the event is now in the past and they are no longer useful. In fact, they are the very same obstacles that will prevent you from experiencing life fully. So when we come back, I will have a conversation with, with Relaine Grant, a counselor here in Treasure Valley. Welcome back. Uh, with me today, I have uh, uh, Raylynn Grant. She is a professional counselor here in the Valley. Uh, I've, I've been talking a little bit about the connection between mind and body and, and the importance of working on the mind as well as on your physical aspect. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I love that you are combining both mind, psyche, and emotions because in order to be a really ultimately healthy person, you have to take a look at all of those facets of you as a person, your mind, your body, how well you take care of your mind and your body, and also your emotions. So it's yeah. kind of a package deal. So the, the emotions, I mean, it, it's, you know, we've, it, we're in society we, where we tend to kind of separate things. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm depressed, and that, so that's the mind. Right. I have a backache, that's a physical. Mm -hmm. um, does it work that way? It seems like it works that way, but when you really look at issues that are going on, again, like you've been saying, they're all intertwined. So oftentimes my clients that come to me will have back aches, sleep problems, issues with muscle pain, fibromyalgia, IBS is a really big one, irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. Lots of my clients will have all sorts of digestive and stomach problems because of the issues that are coming to surface that are psychological or emotional. Yeah, so they're, they're actually coming then with a physical complaint. Yes. And, but you're finding then that there is mm -hmm. an emotional mm -hmm. reason for it. Right. And, so, and mm -hmm. what are some of these common emotional factors that you see? Common emotional factors are things that everyone deals with every day, yeah. like anxiety and depression. Those are the two, two most common things I think we see in private practice. And there's different levels. It's normal to be depressed if something sad is happening. Yeah. And it's perfectly healthy and helpful to be anxious about exciting things that are coming up or even threatening things. You get this low level of anxiety that helps motivate you to create a better outcome for yourself. So all of these things are normal until they start to interfere with your, your regular functioning and, and yeah. your, your um, ability to just get through your life and be as successful as you would like to be. Yeah, and obviously fibromyalgia would mm -hmm. be something that interferes right. with your life. Right. Yeah, you know, we have pain all over the body mm -hmm. and, and so forth. So Depression is highly linked with pain, yeah. which also interferes with sleep, which interferes with overall health, which makes you not want to eat, 
which causes crabbiness, which yeah. causes problems with your relationships and your kids and then your boss. So it's kind of this whole circle of, of I don't want to say dysfunction, but um, broken functionality yeah. that yeah. really needs to get looked at all together. And I think a lot of times people forget to look inside. We look outside. Oh, my back hurts. It hurts so bad. Yeah. I'm going to see a doctor. Yeah. But I think we, especially in the Western world, we just stuff it down. It'll go away. Mm -hmm. It'll get better. I can deal with this. I'm strong. Well, you, yes, you are strong. But sometimes, yeah. just like if you need to see a physical therapist, yeah. you may need to see a psychological therapist to help kind of push through, provide support, provide ideas, yeah. uh, all sorts of things, a, a gift or a gifted um, educated, well-versed counselor can take people through all sorts of, of oh, hurtful okay. things or even promising things that you just want to do better. And can it sometimes be like, uh, let's say they start hurting when they're 30, but could mm -hmm. it be something in their childhood? Absolutely. That, so it, it, it mm -hmm. would be able to impact them so many years later because sure. they didn't have any pain in between and then all of a sudden it starts showing. Mm -hmm. So if a person had a traumatic event, say, um, in their, when they're eight, yeah and they were able to heal and move forward and then they have an eight-year-old child yeah. so that kind of helps them remember those memories and then they worry about their eight-year-old child which might make those painful things whatever that trauma was resurface and then bammo you're back to being eight years old again yeah so a good counselor will help you realize you know that pain's real mm -hmm. and it happened mm -hmm. and you need to be nurtured through it and and we help the counselor nurture themselves through it or the the client excuse me yeah and um just move forward. So it, it, uh, it's, it's kind of like a triggering event then as an adult and it triggers, it activates and something that happened in, in your childhood. Sometimes, that, yeah, um, that's very common. Does it always need to be a triggering event or sometimes? No, no sometimes it's, it's we, in the counseling world we talk about little T's which would be like a whole bunch of smaller hurtful or surprising or um, unpleasant events that just sort of pile up and just sort of stick to your psyche, stick yeah. to your emotions. Yeah. And sometimes there's a capital T trauma, which could be a wreck or a rape or some kind of a, a big owie. Yeah. So depending on what the history is of the person, there are different ways to kind of address and get that person the help that they may be needing. So something seemingly benign, if you have several of those you know, sure. tiny little events, sure. I mean, that can then add mm -hmm. up. So it's not that somebody mm -hmm. thinking, well, I'm just a wuss or a wimp. It, it actually can have sure. that strong of an impact on a person. Absolutely. If, and again, if you kind of equate it to the physiological world, if every couple of days you hurt yourself with a hammer on your knee, yeah. it's not really bad, but enough that it hurts, and that keeps happening time and time and time again. Yeah. Like if you're in a relationship where someone kind of keeps injuring you, yeah. not catastrophically, but enough yeah. that you have these smaller pains that build up, yeah. after a while it just, you have an injury, you yeah. have a wound that needs it, some attention. It's going to be, yeah, needs something that you need to address. Yeah. So in, in your profession, I mean, you have people that come with all different kinds of problems. I mean, sure. how, how would you know in what direction to take them? I mean, do you, do you use the same tool for everyone? Not necessarily. Just like everybody's different, all of the issues and problems are different, just like the therapies and treatments that we use will be different. So yeah, yeah. depending on the person's personality, some people are more spiritual, mm -hmm. so we might take more of an existential look at things. Some people are quite cognitive, yeah. and there's a lot of really, really great cognitive therapies that people can do. And then I also use something called EMDR, which is called eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Uh -huh. And that kind of takes a person into the deeper parts of their trauma or you know, capital T or small T traumas to kind of work through more quickly. Okay. So I think a good counselor will be collaborative with the client and kind of feed off the client and see where their needs are, where their strengths are, yeah. and help that client be a better person within the constructs that they already have and then kind of enlighten some new areas where they may have strengths that they didn't even know. So is there someone that uh, would not need a counselor, do you think? Say that again? Is there someone that would not need a counselor? Well, you know, if you think about it, probably no one needs a counselor, just like yeah. no one needs a doctor, I guess. Yeah. But if you want to be productive and work through things and have support, I think counseling is, is great for anyone at any yeah. level of yeah. life or productivity or functionality. So, yeah, So yeah, I think everyone needs a counselor Thank from you. time to time. Thank you very much, Rylan. Thank you for having great. me. Well, Appreciate my it. My pleasure. So as, as you can see, the, the marriage between working on something both physically and emotionally is, is something that is huge, even if you're dealing with something that uh, can be so physical, like a knee pain, it may be something else behind it. Uh, when we come back, we'll have uh, 
uh, my grand, Papa Joe's, and uh, he'll be cooking up some uh, delicious recipes. Welcome back. With me I have uh, Mike from uh, Papa Joe's Italian restaurant and uh, I, uh, you get a delicious uh, avocado and, and eggs and what, what, what do you got for us? I have a simple powerful snack um, for a weight loss um, regimen. So never let yourself go hungry so have snacks available. Yeah. Um, you know we could have talked about making small meals and showing small meals and uh, we do need to eat small meals throughout the day to keep that system going. So this is just something that we can make um, ahead of time yeah. or right, right then and there because it's so fresh to have that powerful snack. And I chose eggs because they're great proteins. Um, avocado has great fats. Yeah. Um, a deviled egg is great. This is better because we're not having all that extra mayonnaise. We're not adding mustard and sugars and other things. So I just I simply took an avocado mashed it up with some fresh tomato and onion, some lime juice. Now, I zipped it up pretty heavily with cayenne pepper, yeah. jalapenos, and some chili oil, because again, that, chill, that, that, that heat gets your metabolism boosted too. So I've tried to throw a lot of things into this simple dish, yeah. but it took like five minutes to do. So it's something that you can do ahead of time. Boil your eggs, boil a full carton of eggs. Yeah. Put them in the refrigerator that says boiled eggs. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to go through the process of I'm hungry, what can I make? Well, it's already made, you just have to put it together. Yeah. I'm gonna make one, you can just tell us about avocados because I know you love them. Yeah, avocado is actually one of my most favorite, uh, favorite foods of, of all things. I mean, just because it is so full with, with great amino acids, uh, the mineral content, the vitamin content, and also the fat content is just amazing. Uh, and what people don't realize is in order to be able to lose fat, you actually need to eat fat. You need healthy fat in order to be able to burn the fat that's around your abdomen. And uh, so if you combine then the protein with good quality fats, you're going to keep your blood sugar level for a long time and you're not going to want to snack on all these different carbohydrates that will will make you then gain weight. So, so this, this is just a perfect, perfect snack. And uh, uh, yeah, don't stay away from avocado. And don't stay away from- It's a delicious from, snack. Your, your viewers will love it. Yeah. They should really try it. Yeah, thank you very much. So after this, we'll be right back. A really powerful technique that has been used successfully for a lot of people to help to kind of balance your system in relationship to any kind of emotion, but also how you're feeling physically. It's a technique called EFT, or Emotional Freedom Technique. And I, I, I call it kind of like pushing the breaker button, you know, where you then just reset the whole energy system in relationship to an event or a stress factor. And a stress factor can be anything. It can be uh, a, a trauma that took place when you were a child, you know, maybe your mother yelled at you, or maybe there was a fight between your mother and father and uh, that really stuck with you. And it, it's a simple technique. It's something that can be done in your home. It can be done while you're driving a car, or it can even be done uh, at any place. And all it is is just tapping on different acupressure points while you're then focusing on the stress factor. And it's, it's a simple formula, and I'll, I'll explain, you, explain the formula as we go along. It's a, all you do is that you actually start tapping on this acupressure point right here, and I call this a karate chop point. You know, it's a point that you would hit if you would break a brick or a board, so to say, if you, you know, do karate. Uh, so you just tap on that spot, and you say the phrase, even though, and then you fill in the blank, and then you say, I still love and accept myself. So let's say, you know, you want to work through, you know, that you're angry with your husband. And you say, even though I'm angry with my husband, I still love and accept myself fully and completely. And then you repeat that phrase three times. So, even though I'm angry at my husband, I still love and accept myself fully and completely. Even though I'm angry at my husband, still love and accept myself fully and completely. And then you go to the beginning of the eyebrow, tap right there, and then you just say whatever it is that you filled in the blank with. And you say, angry at my husband, angry at my husband. So you go beginning of the eyebrow, 
end of the eyebrow, then you tap under the eyes, then top and bottom lip right here, and you do this the whole time while you're repeating that phrase, whatever it is that you filled in the blank with. And then you go to the beginning of the collarbone and go right underneath it, and you just tap right there. And then you go to what I call the bra strap point. Yeah, I know that only women have bras, but everyone knows where it's at, and you just tap right there. And you can use phrases such as, you know, I feel ashamed because of, you know, whatever this was, or I feel guilty because of this. But you can also use it to control cravings. So let's say you are craving ice cream. So then you can go and say, even though I crave ice cream, I still love and accept myself fully and completely. Even though I crave ice cream, I still love and accept myself fully and completely. Even though I crave ice cream, I still love and accept myself fully and completely. And then you just go through beginning of the eyebrow, crave ice cream. Then end of the eyebrow, crave ice cream. Under the eyes, crave ice cream. Then top and bottom lip, crave ice cream. And then you go to the beginning of the collarbone, right underneath it, just hit the right there, crave ice cream. And then the bra strap point, tap right there, crave ice cream. So this way, it then resets your system in how you view this. And you can then measure and see where you're at from like zero to 10, you know. Uh, 10 is that I gotta have ice cream right now, or zero, you know, I'm okay, I, I don't need it at all. And you can kind of put a number, well, maybe my craving is at seven, and then you go through this whole process, and then you reevaluate and say, you know, well, maybe it's just a two. And then you go through the process again, and then until it then becomes zero. So you can use this technique for anything. And you can also use it for pain, etc. So very powerful technique. After this, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We got another segment of uh, Juicing with Debbie. So Debbie, what, uh, what do you got? Looks delicious. Today we're doing the blender style method, which keeps all the fiber and filler. So you're going to feel full for, for a longer amount of time. Okay. We're doing a green smoothie. So we're going to add ice and water, spinach, cucumbers, parsley, celery, apples, and lime wedges. And uh, um, we've peeled the lime. And, and why did you so. choose these ingredients? Because they look pretty? Uh, yeah. Um, Okay. That, yeah. No, I mean that's <laughs> a, a lot I, of times. I just times. try to get as many nutrients in, in yeah. as I can. Yeah. Well, a lot of times, and when we do the juicing, it's it's just alternating between different types of ingredients. And uh, green. I mean, all the greens has a huge amount of chlorophyll, which will then just support our, you know, support our blood, and that just makes it feel better. So, it's going to be awesome. You get the, the limes there, and limes a huge amount of vitamin C, fantastic antioxidants, and uh, a lot of iron. And we've been talking about how important it is to feel emotionally happy, and iron does that. <laughs> and I get my workout in. <laughs> We'll call this episode a, a combination of juicing and sweating with Debbie. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so the, the fibers is, is really important for detoxification. And uh, let me give this a shot here. Here's the Monte. Mm. Yeah, that, that would keep you full for a long, long time. And uh, so this is a great blood builder, great for detoxification, binding to toxins in, in your gut. And also it just lights up your, your brain with all this chlorophyll and all this iron and, and you know, that, that's in the food. And that way we have energy to work out. Exactly, <laughs> see, that's a key. <laughs> so thank you very much, Debbie. So after this, we'll be right back. Welcome to Ask Dr. Michael segment. 
Uh, we have Danielle Renee Gardner, and uh, she was asking about fibromyalgia. She was diagnosed uh, fibromyalgia, and she's just 24 years old. Well, fibromyalgia is a pain syndrome, and the key in the uh, diagnosis is that you need pain in all four quadrants of the body. You can't just have it on one half. And common uh, symptoms are insomnia, in addition to the pain, and also you have uh, menstrual difficulties, obviously, that is if you're a woman, or and also irritable bowel syndrome and depression. Uh, things that you can do when you're dealing with fibromyalgia is uh, magnesium. Magnesium is fantastic to support and relax the muscles. And also you have malic acid. Malic acid is something that exists a lot in, uh, in apples. And uh, so malic acid and magnesium is the first thing that you want to do. You also want to do good fats. So a lot of omega, things that are anti-inflammatory, as I said, are, are things like uh, good omegas, and also you have turmeric. And uh, so those are things that are fantastic when you're dealing them with fibromyalgia. In addition to, you can do melatonin when you, uh, for sleep. So uh, if you would like to ask me a question, Here's all the information you need to do so. Welcome back. Uh, with me I have uh, Hannah Harnick and I'm gonna display a technique that I use in my office called Applied Psychoneurobiology, or APN for short. And that is a powerful technique to actually be able to pinpoint and see what emotions are stored in what area, in what organ, and also where are they coming from? Where in the childhood they come from your mother, from your father, and uh, then there's certain techniques you can use and to help to remove that stress factor. So I'm gonna use a muscle testing actually to pinpoint and see what it is, because a lot of things aren't really conscious. We have to actually connect with the subconscious for that. So uh, just gonna have you stretch your arm straight up and just keep it really strong. Perfect. And then we can then test different organs. And actually, I'm gonna go liver here. I'm just gonna check kidneys. Oh, there is weak. And then if it is an emotional trigger, then actually the muscle test will change with eye movement. So I'm gonna have you look up here. Keep your eyes up there while I'm testing. And see the arms go strong then. So then I know that there is an emotional factor behind it. And then I can then test and see you know, is it, you know, a common emotion that's connected to the kidneys are fear. So let's test. I do, re see it's weak, and then I test the word fear, and it goes strong. And then I can check and see what age was it, you know, from zero to five, or five to 10. So then we know that it's somewhere in the region between five to 10. So this is a very powerful technique to quickly then pinpoint to see what emotions are affecting Hannah or anyone and where they're affecting the body. So after this, we'll be back with some more. Welcome back. We are ready for the episode Sweat with Debbie. So Debbie, what, what, what do you got for us today? This is a continuation of our endurance training. Once again, I have Christian here. He's a client of mine that we're helping to build up his endurance. So we're going to start. He already knows how to do the exercises. And, and so we're going to start. This is an exercise where we're, we're going to do squats and then high knees. So it, once again, it's going to replicate running, which is a big target of his. So typically you would do 30 seconds of one, then 30 seconds of the other, back to 30, back to 30. We're just going to do about 10 seconds of each one just to show everyone how okay. to do it. Okay, great. So we'll start with squats. Yeah, the weighted speed squat. So what, what's, what's the important part in regards to squats here? I mean, it's, it's just going up and it's down? It's working the, his backside primarily. Yeah. With the, with the weighted, it's getting your endurance up, it's keeping his heart rate up, and then he'll immediately go into high knee. Replicating running. And yeah. so when your body gets to the exhaustion period, this is just normal for it. Yeah. So he would do that, then we would go back to 30 seconds of heavy weighted squats. Okay. Then as, as you get stronger, you, you would increase the the weight of the sand mill. So is, is there a level where you don't want to go down further or you can go on down? On squats you, want to, you typically want to get to a 90 degree angle with the floor on okay. your thighs. Okay, perfect. So, so the next we're going to do shoulder raises, alternating. So it's up, up, 
And what, what does that work on? I mean, I assume shoulders. It's, it's shoulders and, and your arms, Yeah. the back of your arms. And I mean, him being a runner, how, how is that helping him? Well, he's still got the arm motion going on, which oh. is going to be very familiar to the body, but it's also you want to build muscle evenly all over your entire body. Oh, OK. And it helps with arm pump and shoulder drive, all that good arm, stuff. Arm pump and shoulder drive? So, yeah. So what, what, what does that mean for a non-runner? Um, for a non-runner, I don't know, it kind of means when you're running, you want to be able to use your arms for explosion yeah and really get them the faster your arms move the faster your legs will move oh okay so they, they work in conjunction with each other exactly right. oh, okay and, and this, this last one these are heavy arm strong step ups so it's once again it would be sets of 15 so he's going to do 15 on one leg okay. and you just step up and then step back down so it's not a jump on no, that this you one just... is not a jump this is just a step up oh okay and a beginner would start with no weights or a very light weight. Yeah. We have him on a heavier weight, but in the gym he would typically use even a heavier weight than what he's using now. Than, than we're using now. Yeah. Great. So you would do your 15, then you would switch to the other side. And this is in conjunction with our workout from last week. Yeah. So you do all of them in a circuit. Yeah. So one of each one, and then you rest for a minute, and then you go back to the beginning and start over. Oh, okay. So this, this is something that you can, obviously you can do it in the gym. Uh, with, with guidance, but you can also do it yourself. So uh, after this, uh, I'll have some closing remarks. Thank you for tuning in with us today. The mind is a powerful tool. There's a whole science called psychoneuroimmunology, which studies the impact your mind has on your nervous system and your immune system. Since the nervous system connects with every part of the body, and the immune system is what decides what area is supposed to be repaired and defended. Your mind can truly impact every part of you. Your brain controls physiological functions and emotions through the release of neurotransmitters and electrical signaling. How you view yourself and the world around you impact what type of signals that are sent to the rest of the body. Life events and belief systems can have and do have a powerful influence on not only your emotional health, but also on your health as a whole. While dealing with a seemingly very physical health is issue, consider the possibility of using psychotherapeutic techniques. Next week, I have a real treat for you. We will discuss marijuana as a method of controlling pain. Is it a better and healthier choice than the available pharmaceutical pain medications? I'll also be meeting with a mother who had her children taken away because she was successfully treating her severe MS pain with marijuana. MS can be a devastating disease. Tune in next week to watch a mother's journey while dealing with MS and learn about some things that you can do holistically. I'll see you then, as we say in Sweden, VCS.